All right, so now that we have our subject, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how, how the layers work. All right, so I'm gonna make a brand new layer. I'm just gonna press Control or Command and Backspace to fill with black. All right, so all you see is black. So the layer on top is gonna to be the layer that you see in the foreground. And as it goes down, it goes further and further into the background. All right, so if I move this behind the subject, it will be behind the subject. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and continue with the composition. All right, so if you guys downloaded that stuff in the description, I'm gonna go ahead and put some rocks in there. So this will be the rock asset that's, uh, that we downloaded. All right, cool. So now we have some rocks in the image and I just dragged and dropped that from my download file on my computer. So I want to use only this rock up here. So I'm gonna press L to use the lasso tool and the lasso tool, you just make a circle or like whatever shape you want and it will select that area. Um, so I'm gonna use this just to kind of go around this rock here and select all of this. I'll make sure the rock layer is selected and press control or command C and then control or command V. That will copy and paste that selection that I made into a brand new layer. So now I can disable this layer by pressing the I and use this rock. So I want this rock to be behind the subject. So I'm going to go ahead and move that behind the subject. I'll press cont controller command T to transform it and move this into position. Just make this a little bit bigger and just kind of put this into place and you can just do this any way you want to, any way you see fit and just continue to build the scene. All right, if you want one rock, that's fine. You can make one rock, you can make a bunch. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna make three, all right? So I already have this in the scene. So I don't need to continue to drag and drop more stuff into the scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and drag that layer up and that will copy this layer. So that's a quick way to copy things. You can just continue to copy a bunch of the layers if you want to. Um, so I'm going to do that once I'm going to press control or command T to transform this. I'm just going to make this go in a little bit. I'm going to right click and flip horizontal. All right. So this is just going to make it a little bit different than the rock that I had already. I'll move that below the rock that I had because I want this want the center one in the foreground. And so this bottom one's going to be in the background a little bit. I'll make this smaller and just continue to build the composition. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing, hold alter option and drag up and just continue to build to kind of make this look a little bit better. And you guys can put the rocks any way you want to. But uh, just kind of be aware of the lighting. So with this rock, you can see the lighting is on the top. And the lighting on the subject is kind of from this direction. So we want to be aware of the lighting at all times. So with this rock layer, I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it anymore. Then I will go ahead and put the sky into the image as well. So I'm just going to drag and drop that. And I will put this at the very back because I want that to be in the background. So now we start to see our image come together. So now I'm just going to add the lining and you can be as creative as you want to with these. Um, you can put these in any place that you want to. We're going to put this into a screen blending mode. And what screen blending mode does is it takes away all of the blacks. So all the black area will disappear and the light area will appear. So I'm going to put this into a screen blending mode. Press control or command T to kind of put this into place. And I'm just going to go through from one to five and put them in there accordingly. 
All right, so I want this one to be behind the subject, so I'll just go behind the subject. You don't have to be super exact with these things. You can put them anywhere you want to. All right, so for this last asset that we downloaded, it's just a little bit of a smoke asset, and I'm gonna put that into screen blending mode, then just copy that by holding Alt or Option and dragging up, and just continue to put some smoke in here too. All right, so for everything that you put into your image, you want to kind of make it the same color so the rocks are way out of place. They do not match the scene at all. So we're looking at the sky for the color of the image. Um, so the sky is blue and gray. So we want to make all of the rocks that. So I'm going to group the rocks by shift clicking all the way down and pressing control or command G. All right, so now we have a group of the rocks. So if you disable that group, all of the rocks go with it. So now that we have that group, we can apply adjustment layers to the whole group instead of doing it individually. So I'm gonna go down to adjustment layers and put in a hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring that hue and saturation adjustment layer above the group and then clip it to the group by pressing this button. So now the hue and saturation adjustment layer only affects the rock group. I'm gonna reduce the saturation all the way. Then I'm gonna add a color balance adjustment layer. All right, so I'm gonna clip that all the way down to the group by just pressing this button and it will clip all the way down. I'm going to add blue to it. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta, then add a little cyan as well. So that kind of color graded it a little bit. Now we have to look at the highlights and the shadows. All right, so it's important to match blacks and match the shadows in every single image. Um, so the shadows here do not match at all. So I'm gonna make a levels adjustment layer, and then I'm gonna clip that all the way down to the rock group. This slider affects the blacks, the one, the one in the middle affects the midtones, and the one on the right affects the, uh, the highlights and the whites. All right, so this slider here will make the blacks gray, and this will make the whites gray. So what I wanna do is try to match the blacks a little bit better. I'm gonna go down here on the blacks, and then go down here in the midtones as well, and then I'm gonna reduce the high, or I'm gonna increase the highlights, and then just try to match that rock a little bit better to the scene. All right, so this is much better. The shadow is not as dark as it should be, so I'm gonna add another curves adjustment layer. So I'm gonna make a curves adjustment layer and clip that to the rocks group. So I'm looking at the shadows in the subject. So I wanna to try to match that a little bit. Okay, so the bottom affects the dark areas, the, the shadows and the blacks. This affects the whites and the highlights, and the, this is just the midtones. All right. What I want to do is just take the right and go down. So this way it will match the scene better without it being too overwhelming. Now the top area is not looking great. So I'm going to mask out this adjustment layer just on the top area. So I'll use my brush tool with a soft brush. Make sure it's soft around and Increase the size and just paint away the effect on the top and where the highlights should be. All right, so that matches the scene a lot better. So for the last thing in this part of the series, I'm going to make a shadow for the subject. So as you can see, it's very obvious that this is looking funny uh, because the subject doesn't have any shadows. All right, so I'll go into the subject group and add a new layer. I'll put that layer on the bottom because I want the shadow to be underneath the foot, so that would be behind the subject. So I'm gonna just select a dark color over here 
and I'm going to go ahead and put this into a multiply blending mode. And that way it will make it dark without it making it solid. All right. So multiply is pretty good for shadows. Um, so I'm just going to paint the shadows for this image where they should go. All right, so you don't have to be super precise with this. We just need to get some kind of shadow underneath the subject so it will look better. All right, so I'm pressing E to go to the eraser and just kind of touch up the shadow as I'm going along. So that's pretty good. I'm going to reduce the opacity because um, the shadow shouldn't be that intense. So the image, as you can see, already looks much better with the shadow. Um, so with shadows, where you can't just do like one shadow because it's not realistic. So the shadow that's coming out is a little bit less solid. And then right beneath the foot needs to be very, very dark. So I'm going to add a new layer and just go in here with the same color and go underneath the foot until I feel like it's a little bit more realistic. I'm gonna make sure this is into a multiply blending mode and do the same thing on this side. All right, so this is much more realistic. All right, I'm gonna reduce the opacity on this just a little bit. Now we have a good shadow. So that's it for this part of the series. In the next part of the series, we're gonna go over how to um, color grade the whole image and to bring it together a lot better.